creating the service layer, in this section we'll create a service layer for our payment service. We'll cover what is CDI, we'll also develop a payment service using CDI, and finally we'll look at Java 9 default methods for our payment service. What is CDI? In this video we'll look at what CDI is, and what dependency injection is, and CDI beans are. We'll also have a quick refresher on CDI scopes. What is CDI? CDI stands for Context and Dependency Injection. It's the component model for Java EE. Contexts bind components to a lifecycle and they enhance the object. And we have dependency injection, which we inject components into our application. It's hard to understand what this means without seeing it in action, but a good way to think of it is of a big object factory whose life cycles are managed by contexts that can be injected into our own components without our applications having to deal with the instantiation. The reference implementation for CDI 2.0, which is used in Java E8, is JBoss Weld 3.0, so that's useful to know. What CDI provides? CDI provides an expression language. We've used this before in our JSF, so here we have example.id, that's the expression language. And we also have type safety, um, where the CDI resolves by type or the qualifier if required. And we also, CDI provides extensibility of objects. What is dependency injection? It's part of the inversion of control pattern. So, and the container manages the creation of instances in the object life cycles and provides them when we need them instead of us having to declare references to them. So you may be used to something like class my object then to create an instance of that object you would say my object my object equals new my object with dependency injection you just mark your bean as at named which adds it into the uh, cdi life cycle and then we inject that object using the at inject annotation and note, note we're not using equals new the application server provides that for us on demand you often see dependency injection referred to as the Hollywood principle of don't call us, we'll call you. So this means that we just have to declare the object like my object here. And again, like I've just said, the application server will go off and find it and supply it when we actually need it. The advantages of dependency injection. It's quite important to think, why do you need dependency injection? And, or why do I want the container to decide what objects to use when, I, when you can just declare new? It doesn't look that hard. But dependency injection helps us create loosely coupled components. This means each component has little or no knowledge of its other, of other components that depending on. A key part of this is developing against interfaces. So you may see the previous one, we, we could actually implement an interface for my object, and then we could just reference that interface. This brings us on to one of the key advantages, if not the main advantage of dependency injection, is its testability. So we can create testable objects, so we could substitute a component for a mock instance, and then we could write unit tests against that, and we could leave the application server to sort out at runtime what's required. And finally, because we don't have to concern ourselves with creation, our code becomes more readable. There's two useful annotations to know. One is at inject. This marks any dependencies for the application to its server to provide to us at runtime. And then if there's a conflict, we can use something like at named qualifier. So here we've got named brackets, optional name, referencing my object, or we can use custom qualifiers. So here we have at qualifier, at retention, and at target, public at interface my qualifier. And what we would do here is we would substitute it for, instead of at named optional name, we would just say at my qualifier and the application server would be able to go and find it. And finally, let's have a quick refresher on scopes. So we have request scope, which we're already aware from JSF, is for a single client request response. We have session scoped, which is for a single client over multiple request responses. And we have application scoped, which is available to all clients over multiple requests and responses. And finally, conversation scoped, which is a single client over a specific set of request responses. In this video, we've learned about CDI and Java EE8.